It was war that drove Mohammed Dalil to Bavaria on a journey from Syria to provincial Germany. He was an extreme spirit. He was extreme. But did he come to escape conflict or instead to bring violence with him, to inflict it on the very people who gave him refuge? He is highly traumatized. He was tortured badly. What motivated this man to blow himself up in this beer garden one evening last month, claiming to do so in the name of Islamic State? To think that he come with that intention, it doesn't fit for me. Mohammed Dalil was suicidal. In January 2015, he slashed his wrists after he was told he would be deported to Bulgaria, the country where he first entered the European Union. When he came the first time, he has bandages around his arms uh, because that was quite fresh. They put him into a psychiatric clinic for 10 days and then he, they left him. And then uh, a foreign office said, OK, you must go back to Bulgaria. And then he promised to take gasoline, pour over him in front of the Bundesamt and uh, set fire. Mohamed Dalil spent dozens of hours in this chair talking to Axel von Maltzitz. Along with his wife, Gisela, he runs a trauma therapy centre for refugees. Over a period of 12 months, Axel and Gisela gained a deep insight into the mind of a future suicide bomber. Mr Dalil, who claimed to be an opposition activist, told them he'd been brutally tortured in Aleppo. For example, they fix him to the wall, uh, so tight that uh, his veners were, were still swollen here, and when you stand there, every five minutes you get an electroshock. So you cannot sleep for days. Traumatization has very typical symptoms. If you talk with somebody and he describes the symptoms, you can say he has that post-traumatic stress disorder. And did he have post-traumatic stress disorder? Severely. Severely. Very, yes. very strong. No he doubt. once said, I made a relaxation uh, exercise with him later in the therapy. I asked him, please close your eyes. And he said, impossible, I cannot close the eyes. He always was looking up with open eyes, even when he should relax and breathe a little deeper, because he said the pictures, the bad pictures can start running the moment that the eyes are closed. After their first session last year, Axel von Maltzitz wrote an extensive psychological assessment. Dalil, he said, was a man filled with anger and hopelessness. And in an observation that now seems prophetic, he wrote, that Mr. Dalil is an extreme spirit and it's possible that he even puts his suicide into a spectacular scenery. Right. In 2013, Dalil had given an interview to Bulgarian television. He told reporters he'd been injured in a rocket attack on his home in Aleppo, an attack in which his wife and infant son had died. He also alleged he'd been mistreated in Bulgarian detention. Von Maltzitz's psychological assessment made its way to the German Federal Migration Service. They quietly dropped their threat to deport Dalil, who continued living at a hostel in Ansbach while receiving treatment on a local psychiatric ward. Then, on the 13th of July, he received another deportation notice. Ten days later, he would blow himself up. The most important that happened was that he got from the Auslander Amt the letter telling you have to go back to Bulgaria. And you think that was the catalyst? Sure, because that is always what he promised. That is what I warned the officers for. You warned them? I warned them. I, that is what I've written. Be careful with him if he has to be deported to Bulgaria. It's impossible to say whether Mohammed Dalil's imminent deportation acted as some sort of trigger. Investigators have told me that they're not ruling out the possibility that he may have been in contact with jihadist groups years before he committed suicide. But they do say that his communication online with people purporting to represent Islamic State was a relatively recent development and that in the minutes before he detonated his bomb, he was communicating with a telephone number in Saudi Arabia. The German security services are now working to identify two different types of potential Islamic State attack. One coordinated, IS-led, 
of the type we saw in Paris and Brussels. The other, the self-radicalizing lone wolf. Mohamed Delil, they believe, falls into the second category. Eine große Rolle spielt hier das Internet. Es gibt eine Vielzahl von dschihadistischer Propaganda, an die man sehr leicht rankommt im Internet. Und das ist eine große Rolle, die hier zu beobachten ist. Die Prozesse vollziehen sich sehr schnell. Es scheint relativ naheliegend, dass psychisch auffällige oder psychisch anfällige Personen auch für die Ideologie des Salafismus und des Dschihad sehr empfänglich sind. Mohammed Dalil managed to kill only himself. From an Islamic State point of view, this was a botched operation. But if he had managed to get through into this square, which at the time was packed with two and a half thousand concert goers, if he had managed to detonate his bomb properly, this could have been a very, very deadly attack indeed. And that's why Germany is feeling so vulnerable right now. For many Germans, last summer's outpouring of goodwill towards refugees has given way to suspicion and resentment. Das ist auch ein Ziel des IS ganz klar, hier Muslime gegen Nichtmuslime aufzubringen. Und momentan ist ihm das, es zeigen auch die Reaktionen nach Ansbach und Würzburg schon einigermaßen gelungen. Ich meine schon, dass es durchaus eine Taktik des IS auch ist. Auch wenn man sagen muss, der IS hat sich diese Anschläge von Ansbach und Würzburg erst nachträglich zu eigen gemacht. Es handelt sich hier nicht um gesteuerte, also nach Lage der, momentan Lage der Ermittlung, um, um gesteuerte, um IS gesteuerte Anschläge. For his therapy, Mohammed Dalil traveled from Ansbach to the pretty town of Lindau. He used to ride his bike along the shores of the lake. Across the water, Switzerland, Austria, Liechtenstein. His next session was penciled in for the 1st of August. He never made it. Much of what he said in the therapy room cannot be verified. His role in the opposition, the torture, the wife and child. But did, did you get a sense that you believed him? I believed him, yes. Yeah. And you as well? Yeah, yeah. I think what's also wichtig is, what man then gerne vergisst, when lauter Spekulationen in der Welt sind, uh, dass sich ja, er ist nicht der Einzige, dass IS sich meldet, wenn einer irgendwie ein Messer in der Hand hat und dann sagt, ja, das ist unser Mann, ja, oder unser Kämpfer. Und so wird eigentlich die Welt von vornherein verdreht und das finde ich einfach ganz gefährlich, auch für unser die Gesellschaft, ja, weil das wird immer mehr und dann entstehen immer mehr Ängste. Mohammed Dalil was the first Islamic State inspired suicide bomber in Germany. But everyone who knew him said he never seemed particularly religious. So are we giving too much credence to IS for an attack they may have had little hand in organizing? We don't know all the facts and we probably never will. But from what we do know, it's clear that Mohammed Dalil can't be reduced to simple binaries. He was neither just a would-be jihadist mass murderer, nor was he simply a mentally disturbed victim of war. His case raises difficult questions for German society and beyond, about attitudes to refugees, about violence and mental health, and about what it means to call something an act of terror. <laughs>